Hi, I'm Danielle from CaptivatingCostumes.com. In this video, we'll be discussing pretty lights and stuff. Stay tuned. So I finally got the NeoPixels set up. This is a NeoPixel 60 pixel ring and it comes in four sections. Now my soldering is absolutely horrendous but to attach each of the four sections you have to solder the 5 volt to the 5 volt, the data in to the data in and the ground to the ground and the solder actually holds the ring in one piece. So I uploaded a bit of code to it and for some reason it wasn't working. Um, so I tried loads of different things and it still wasn't working. I tried hooking up to an external battery and it still wasn't working. And eventually the way that I solved the problem was actually hooking the NeoPixel ring up to the 3.3 volt output of the Arduino Duo. Now that's really confusing to me because I was under the impression that these things ran on 5 volts. So I'm not sure why that's happening, but it's early days with this particular ring, so I'll have to do a few more tests and find out why it's requesting 3.3 volts instead of 5. So for the moment, I've just uploaded a basic sketch, if I just plug the power in, which just does the basic animation from the proton pack in the movie. And although the video isn't picking up the colour properly, that's actually a really nice red that's glowing there. So, over the last couple of days, I've also been printing out the five parts of uh, the synchrotron which sits inside the Faraday cage. And they finally finished today, and although I've only got four of them hooked, uh, connected at the moment, this is necessary because if I don't leave that gap, I won't be able to get the NeoPixel ring inside. So... I don't mind moving it whilst it's on because all the connections are fairly good. In order to get it inside, I have to kind of slot it through that gap. Let's move everything over a bit more. And then lay it down flat inside. So that's what we have at the moment. And I've also got my speaker ready to be hooked up as well, which will sit just on there. And if you look through the side, that's the kind of effect that it's going to give. Now the problem is, with the LEDs facing upwards, I think the light is a little bit too concentrated. So I had a little bit of a play around, and I decided that I'm probably going to mount it upside down, facing downwards. Now if we have a look through the side now, that gives a much better effect. So I need to find a way of mounting that upside down in there, which shouldn't be too difficult. Um, and hopefully I will have mounted that uh, by the next section. So let's try and do this with one hand. Mm, it's still a bit warm, but we'll try it anyway. Woo! Popped off. There we go. So after a brief interval, I finally managed to get the entire synchrotron insert attached together. This last join here was an absolute nightmare um, because it, I, it was just really difficult to get into. I've made an absolute mess of it, which I'll probably just paint over with black paint. Um, as I mentioned, whilst putting it together, I had to do it whilst the NeoPixel ring was inside because it's too big to fit through any gaps. And I have mounted it onto the top of the synchrotron area, um, shining down because I think it creates a much better effect. So if we plug it in now, the Arduino do now has power to it. And I need to press the reset button in order to make it start. So... 
And that's the effect that we're currently getting inside the synchrotron. And I think it gives a nice glow through those holes. If I put the speaker into its eventual mounting position, which will be there. And put the first section of the Faraday cage on top. followed by the heat sink. You can see it's going to give a really nice effect. So that's just the first of quite a few animations that I'm going to get these NeoPixels to do. So let's turn the lights off and see what it's like. So that's the effect that we're getting now in the dark, which as you can see looks really cool. And if we have a look from the top. And we'll try it with just a bit of light. And there we have it. So that's how it's going to look. So I've changed the colour of the NeoPixels to green instead of red because I think it looks nicer in green. Um, I probably won't keep it like that. Um, I think I mentioned previously that I want to have analog controls to be able to choose any color that I want. But I just wanted to show you what it looks like underneath. So if we lift this up and have a look underneath. See, if I'd have had the NeoPixels shining upwards, that's what people would have been able to see. And I just think the light's too concentrated. It's better if it shines down onto a surface and it kind of uh, spreads out a little bit more and gives a nicer glow instead of a, a, sh a sharp, harsh light. So, and as you can see from this angle, it would have been impossible for me to get those NeoPixels in there if I hadn't have left the one section off. Also here, you can see my extremely poor gluing. I didn't even bother gluing that section. I probably should though. Uh, and there's glue overlaps all over the place, but luckily nobody will ever see that part of it. Right, so it's been a few days now since I recorded the first parts of the video. And I have since hooked up the Arduino Pro Mini, uh, my new screen, which will be going in the Proton Pack, and of course the Arduino Due. I keep calling it Duo, even though that's wrong. So I've been having a lot of problems with this because as I mentioned I wanted the Pro Mini in the Proton in the uh, thrower and that would send data to the Do to control various different things and the Do would action those things. So in this case I've set up a mini uh, kind of program which basically uses this as a switch and when that's grounded um, it should send a signal to the Arduino Due and tell it to change the color of the light to green. And that's using a serial uh, via the two things. And also when this is grounded, it should also tell the Due, Due to play a different animation on the screen. Now the first thing that I found out is that the Due can't control the NeoPixels and the screen at the same time. Basically it would do one rotation of the red lights and then play an animation whilst the NeoPixels are off. And I've been talking to James Bruton from X-Robots a lot lately and if you don't watch his videos already I would highly suggest you go over and have a look because some of his stuff is absolutely amazing. So. I was speaking to him about uh, getting the screen and the NeoPixels to run simultaneously and there's a lot of multitasking involved and I think it's just a little bit outside my comfort zone. So what I've decided to do is buy a second Arduino Pro Mini. So in the eventual setup, this Pro Mini, which will be in the thrower, will send a signal to the Due saying, please change the animation on the screen. This one will control the screen and the animations will change. And in turn, the Due will send another signal to a second Pro Mini, telling the Pro Mini to change the animations on the NeoPixel. And I think for the price of the Pro Mini, at just two pounds, it saves me a lot of effort uh, trying to figure out how to multitask the Arduino. So I'm still waiting for the Pro Mini to come. 
uh, and hopefully that will be in next week's video. I'll have the screen and the LEDs working together. The next problem I had, as I mentioned, this is supposed to be acting as a button, is when this is not grounded, when the button is not pressed, the NeoPixels should glow red, as you can see here. And when it is grounded, it sh they should glow green. And the way that it's doing this is when this is not grounded, this is sending a constant L letter over to this uh, Arduino Duo. And the Jew is sat there thinking, if I receive an L, then I know that these NeoPixels have got to be red. Now, when you ground it, this should start sending a H. And the Arduino do sits there thinking, if I receive a H, I need to change these NeoPixels to green. But what's actually happening for some reason is when, it's, uh, when the button isn't pressed, it's sending its L, so the do is making them red. And as soon as you ground it, the Pro Mini is now sending a H to the Arduino Do, but for some reason, the Do is completely ignoring it and still receiving the L, as you can see. Now, if I press the reset button on both of the units, whilst it's still grounded, when it starts up again, you can see that it's changed to green. So for some reason, the Arduino um, do is not receiving the letter that corresponds with the green colour. I've checked on Serial Monitor and I can see that the Arduino Pro Mini is definitely sending out the correct letters, but the Arduino Due is not receiving the correct letters for some reason. So that's another piece of the code that I'm going to have to work on by next week and I'll hope I'll, hopefully I'll have that solved for the next video. So hopefully in the next video I will be able to dis uh, show lots of animations. I'd like to get some of the proton pack parts fitted together and we can start getting a good idea of how this is going to look. I have also just finished building the part to mount the screen into in um, 123D Design, I think it's called. So that will hopefully be printed out by next week and we can get lots of stuff mounted. I really want to get this problem solved because it's annoying the hell out of me. Again, James Bruton has given me a few um, possible remedies to solve the problem that I'm having. So I'm going to try those probably later today and see how I get on with them. So... That's all I've got time for this video. Um, I really want to get to work on this code and try getting everything working together. Um, hopefully by next week I'll have that sorted. Um, so for now, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to me, like the video if you enjoyed it, and like my Facebook page. Thank you as always for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. And see you next time. Love you all. Turn the light up.